Let us look at some of the basic concepts in this section. The concept of quality costs is a means to quantify the total cost of quality related efforts and efficiencies. It was first described by Feigenbaum in a 1956 Harvard Business Review article. He classified the cost of quality into four categories. Prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure cost, and external failure cost. Iran classified the cost of poor quality into tangible and intangible costs. This slide highlights that the intangible costs form the biggest part of the cost of poor quality. These are the costs which are difficult to measure. Tangible costs like inspection, warranty, scrap, rework, and reject costs are just the tip of the big iceberg. The slide shows, as the sigma level of the process increases, the cost of quality decreases. Any activity can be shown as input, process, and output. A process takes one or more inputs, does some processing, and converts that into output. Literally, the inputs can be anything from labor, material, machine, decision, or information. Some of the inputs are controllable, while the others are uncontrollable. The factors which are uncontrollable, or too costly to control, or not desirable to control, are known as noise factors. Customer plays a key role in the Six Sigma initiative. Customer satisfaction can be achieved when the customer requirements are met. CTQ, or critical to quality, are the key measurable characteristics of a product or process whose performance standards or specification limits must be met in order to satisfy the customer. Or, in short, critical to quality, or CTQ, are the expectations of the customer. Defect means failing to deliver what the customer wants, or failing to achieve the CTQ. Defective, on the other hand means the failing of the entire unit to meet the required criterion. A defective unit will have one or more defects. However, not all defects make a unit defective. Six Sigma uses defects per million opportunities as matrix to calculate the level of quality in terms of sigmas. Defect opportunities can be thought of as the maximum possible number of defects in a unit if everything is wrong. So, if a unit has five parts, and in each part there are three defects possible, by multiplying these two numbers, we can say that there are a maximum of 15 defects possible, or there are 15 defect opportunities. In the previous slide, we calculated that with five parts and three possible defects in each part, the total defect opportunities are 15. Suppose during the inspection, you find that there are actually two defects in 10 units inspected, then the DPO, or defects per opportunity are 2 divided by 15 times 10, or 0 0.0133. The purpose of previous two slides was to show you how to calculate the DPMO. Once you have calculated the DPO, which you did in the last slide, just multiply the DPO with 1 million to get the DPMO, or defects per million opportunities. In the example discussed in the previous two slides, the DPMO comes out to be 13,333. By looking at the table, the sigma level for 13,333 DPMO is 3.7 sigmas. In Six Sigma, we attempt to achieve 3.4 defects per million opportunities.